Charlie. Charlie. Oh, are you upset? <laughs> hey guys, it's Jane. I'm in here with my dog, Charlie, and he's sulking a little bit because I'm not giving him as much attention as he feels he deserves here. Um, we're in my bedroom again. It's been a little while since my last video, but I've got a whole spread of things to show you here. So let's get started. Um, so first, so there's going to be a couple of groupings of things. We have things that I thrifted. We have things that I bought from an estate sale. And then we have some neat little things that I got from my grandmother's house, which I know I had shown you a couple of items um, that I was able to get from her home in the last video that mean a lot to me. So um, I'll go over those more toward the end. But we're going to start off with the items that I thrifted since my last video. Um, I think the majority of this all came from one thrifting trip um, to Goodwill. The first thing is these uranium juice glasses, which you can see I got my little black light here to show you. They are definitely uranium. They are lighting up pretty cool there. And it was funny because I o originally I only found three of them. Um, and I, you know, I took the three and then I went back the next day just to see if the other piece of the other cups of the set would show up and lo and behold they were there. Um, cause sometimes that happens. You'll go and you'll go to Goodwill and you'll find part of a set and you can't find the rest, but then if you go back a little bit later, like the next day or the day after, the rest of it will show up. So that's what happened here. So I was very, very happy to complete the set there. Um, so yeah, they're just little um, beveled juice glasses, and I believe they're um, anchor hawking, but I could be wrong. But yeah, they're definitely uranium. I paid up a little bit for these just because I do, I love uranium glass. Um, so I paid $2 a piece for these. But I've seen on eBay that they can go, for full sets, they can go anywhere from 60 to $80. So I was willing to pay up a little bit. Plus, you know, I like to hold on to uranium glass anyway, so it's not a big deal if they don't sell. They can just sit in my cabinet and look pretty. Um, the next thing was this little ceramic snail. Um, I'm not sure exactly if he's vintage or not, but there's like a mate, there's a made in Japan sticker on the bottom here. He doesn't have any chips or cracks. And I didn't know if he was a candle holder, because you see he has this opening in the back. And there's my boy. Hello. Here's my Charlie. <laughs> um, but then he also has three little, or four little holes in the top there. So I don't know if that's just to let the, you know, the air circulate through for the candle, or if maybe, you know, you can put like incense in there, or like a, or maybe even like an oil diffuser, you know, you have like the little diffusers where you put the reeds in and they can stick out. So maybe that's, maybe that's something to it. Um... I believe I only paid, let me think, I think I only paid like a dollar for him, and he can go for around 12 to 16. The next bit of things I bought, again, these were, I paid up a little bit for these, but I was excited about them, are these um, Belique uh, Christmas ornaments. So you've probably heard me talk about Belique before in previous videos, because I've picked up some items of theirs before. But they're Ireland, uh, uh, Irish porcelain, um, and they're pretty desirable depending on what you get. But this this was four sets that I think um, are the Twelve Days of Christmas. So you have like the partridge in the pear tree. You've got the two turtle doves there, and then there was um, just these two little teapots. 
One of them is a little bit more faded than the other, might be a little older. But yeah, they were in their original boxes and everything. Um, the boxes are a little bit beat up, but the ornaments themselves didn't have any damage. So I picked those up, and I paid $4 a piece for those, which again was a little much. But I know that um, depending on the type, they can go for around $20 to $25 a piece. So again, it wasn't a big deal to me. And also, I like Balik, so I'll put them on my tree if they don't sell. The next thing was this potpourri container, this glass potpourri container. Um, I just picked it up because I thought it was pretty, and it was brand new in the package. Um, but come to find out that it is, um, the top is made of pewter, and this is what is called new old stock. So this is um, an older piece that it has never been opened before. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the designer. If I think of it, I'll put it in the top of the screen there. But anyway, this is um, this is from the 90s, and there's like a specific maker of these uh, potpourri containers that can be pretty desirable. Um, and the reason why I know that is because I've seen other models of this exact type um, that were open, and in the picture that they take, you can see the name inscribed on the inside of the bottom of the lid, and it says the year, which is I think is like 1992 or 1994 or something like that. But it's just a real pretty um, container. It's got like this garden scene on it, so it's got these flowers, um, like a little uh, birdhouse, a sundial, um, just like a nice floral design to it. So yeah, um, again, I think I paid like $2 for this one, and these go for, you know, 16 to 18 um, used. So because of the fact this is new, I might try to do like 18 to 20 for that one. Next, uh, we have this little, um, I don't know if it's a vase or a candle holder or what, but I picked this up. This was not a Goodwill bought buy. This was a... Um, a little church thrift, I think it's like a Lutheran mission shop or something like that that's in downtown Annapolis. Anyway, um, this was the only thing I ended up picking up there that day, but it, it's it's made of onyx and it's just really pretty, you know, solid, solid onyx stone and there's no damage or chips or cracks or anything like that and I just really appreciated um, the weight of it and the way that it looked. But yeah, again, I'm not sure if you would call that like a bud vase or if you could just stick a candle in there. Um, but I paid $4 for that and they go for around $25. Next, we have this lighthouse candle holder. This was again from the same uh, Goodwill trip that I took. But just look at that glaze. I love the glazing on this, which is the big reason why I picked it up. It's got that kind of the darker blue going into the, the gold color almost. And um, yeah, so it's like a tea light or a votive candle holder. And it's made um, by Candle Bay Company. Um, so yeah, this one I think I paid $3 for. And again, they go for around 20 to 25. That was real nice. That kind of the glazing kind of reminded me of um, if you've ever seen like Bill Campbell pottery. That that's what it kind of reminded me of. So I picked that up. That's been sitting on our living room table for summertime. Next was just this sweet little set of. Um, doilies or I don't know if you would call them doilies necessary but necessarily but they're um it's got like this mesh material in the middle there but it's just this nice beautiful bright yellow color with the floral um edging there and I think I only paid like a dollar fifty for those and I thought they could be nice just for um photo purposes like if I wanted to set something 
on top of them just to give the picture a little bit more interest. But in the so in the meantime, I'll use them for those, and then whenever I list them, um, they only go for like I don't know, ten to twelve. But they're still they're cute enough to where I didn't want to leave them behind for a dollar fifty. So I got those. The next thing, um, these were a really cool pickup from this place that was next to the Lutheran Mission shop. It's called, um, oh gosh, something, it's got the word vintage in it, but now, now for whatever reason I can't remember the name. But anyway, it's a complete, like, vintage store, so they've got different rooms and different things, like they have clothes and furniture and jewelry and you know records and all kinds of stuff like whatever you can think of they have it you know and so mainly we just went there I didn't really go there to thrift I mainly just went to look around um, but these this woman was there doing her, her own little like pop-up shop there and these were there and I just had to pick them up because they're so cute um, sorry I know my camera's a little a little fuzzy and doesn't want to focus for you, but it's just little mushroom um, clip earrings, and I picked those up for five dollars, and they are vintage. Um, they've got some like dirtiness to them. I tried to clean them up as best I could, but they're definitely old. And I put those up on my Etsy shop. I think for around twenty. Yeah, I want to say twenty dollars. So, because mushrooms are definitely, like, in right now, so I'm sure somebody will appreciate those. And again, I don't have pierced ears, so if I ever felt inclined, I might wear them, too. The next thing was really weird and funny. I um, mean, my husband kind of looked at me kind of funny when I brought this home, but this was, again, from Goodwill. Uh, this was in, like, the section where they have, like, the bed sheets and stuff like that. It was just kind of like hanging up on a hanger and I said what is this like it's such a bright colors and I saw some eyeballs on it so I was like I definitely want to check this out but um let me see if I can open it up for you hold on one second okay check this crazy thing out so this is like a tapestry just like a piece of material that you can hang up on the wall but it's just nuts. It's like, it's got all these, like, eyeballs and, like, trippy colors and just, it's got, like, mushrooms and, like, alien things. Things that kind of look like, you know, an octopus. You got this crazy guy down here with his teeth and his crazy eyes. Yeah, and this huge mushroom that I thought was pretty neat. It reminds me of like the old, you know, the old tapestries that people used to hang up in their room when they had a black light, you know, which it would be interesting to see what that looks like. I don't know if it is black light um activated or whatever, but let me see. Let me get my, Hold on one second. I'm going to try to see if I can get my black light up and running. Okay, so I've got the black light. And I'm just kind of like gonna shine it on here and see if anything happens mm. no I don't see anything glowing or anything I mean like the stars in the background kind of bright get a little bit brighter but I don't really think it has any kind of like black light reactive coloring in it or anything but still it would look cool on the wall you know and again, mushrooms are in right now, so I'm sure, you know, some teenager or something's going to want to hang that up in their room. Um, I think I paid $4 for that, and I'm going to put it up for 25 Okay, so the next thing is I went on and I did an online estate sale or I participated in an online estate sale auction. Um, and this is all I bought. It was a lot of these three vases. Okay. 
and I only have information on one of them, so maybe if you know anything, you can post some information in the comments, but um, I specifically bought the lot for a reason, and I'll let you know what that is in just a second. So this is the first vase. It's just this black vase, and it's got like um, different uh, plant life kind of like glazed into there, you know, like dried flowers in it, which I thought was cool. No damage on that at all. The shape of it was really interesting. But yeah, I didn't see any kind of like maker's mark or anything like that, and I tried to look online, and I couldn't find any that were similar. So, I don't know. Oh, I paid, um, sorry, I paid $39 total for this lot of vases, um, which includes like the fee that the estate sale charges. So, um, that averages out, I think minus the fee, that averages out to be about $13 per vase that I paid. But yeah, I'm not really sure about that one. I just thought that was neat. The next one, again, I don't have any info, um, I, but I liked the look of it. I liked the coloring of it. It kind of looked German to me, um, but again, I don't see any kind of like markings or signatures or anything. The unfortunate thing about this one is it did get damaged at some point because you can see um, there's like cracks in here in the top of the vase and either like it didn't crack enough for it to break or somebody repaired it and now that I'm looking at it I'm thinking yeah because the outs on this side I don't see the crack coming through and on this side you can tell because it's got a little bit of a um, an opening there so I think it just was cracked but not cracked enough to be repaired. Oh, wait a minute. I do, I think I do see some glue in there that somebody tried to glue it back. I don't know. But either way, it was cool. It's got like these heavy, like, lines in it. And like that orange and dark brown coloring. Again, I, I felt like it might be German, but really I'm not sure. So if you know anything, you can let me know. So this is the one that I'm most excited about, and this is the reason why I bid on this lot. Um, and the only reason that I'm familiar with this is from a channel that I watch um, on YouTube of another reseller. Her name is Laura Caldwell, and she is a big Batosi fan. So, um, the only, the only person I've ever heard talk about Batosi is her, and I've seen her pick up a couple of pieces before, so when I saw this vase, I recognized it as a Batosi piece. Um, I was careful to double check and make sure that it was actually Batosi before I bid, um, and so I was able to confirm with a group um, on Facebook, a Batosi group that has a couple of experts in there um, regarding Batosi, and I was able to confirm that it, it yes, it is a Batosi vase. Um, and they were manufactured by a company called Rosenthal Netter for Batosi. And usually, like a lot of times, you'll see on the bottom they'll have a sticker that says Rosenthal Netter on it, but mine, unfortunately, the original sticker was gone. But so you'll see different markings for Batosi, but um, usually you'll see, like you see how it says that the number is 45 slash 13. So you'll see like numbering like that, or sometimes you'll see like signatures that say Italy or handwritten in Italy, or you'll also see also see stamping of made in Italy, which is which is what mine has. So it's got the recess stamp. So. One, uh, a couple of the ways you can tell if it's a real Botosi piece, which I don't think that Botosi is one of those brands that gets made, like fake, there's a lot of fakes out there. 
like people tend to take advantage of it and they'll start making uh, fakes or replicas of them and try to pass them off as the real thing. But Butosi isn't really one of the ones that that, ha that happens to a lot, which is another reason why I was pretty confident this was real. But there are a few ways you can tell that it's real Butosi. So, um, is that it doesn't have, it, first of all, it has like these, um, like inset designs, like, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not hand painted on there. It's not lightly pressed in there. It's rough and like, it's con, it's concave. You know what I'm saying? It's a concave design in the, um, in the vase. Another thing is if you see brush strokes in the coloring, you know, so especially like down here, you can definitely see the brush strokes happening there. And then also another thing you want to look for is it's not overly like glazed. You know what I mean? Like it's still, there's still some parts there that are kind of, um, just more natural looking. It's not very glossy, you know, which so, that one isn't really necessarily one of the signs you want to look for because there are Batosi pieces that are heavily glossed or glazed. Um, but yeah, all three of those told me that this was definitely a Batosi. And I was pretty excited about that. So I went ahead and put in my bid and again ended up paying 39 for all three. Um, so as far as those two go, again, I don't really have any information to go off of, so I'm not really sure how much they would go for. Especially this one being damaged, you know, I don't think it's worth it to even bother listing, but it's still nice. But, um, this guy is around 275 to $325, um, on eBay. So, yeah, so again, averaging, I paid $13 per vase is what I averaged out, and this is, you know, this is a good piece. So I was pretty excited about that. So I haven't had I haven't listed him yet because I'm just very excited to have him in my possession. So I might hold on to that for a little while before I list. But he would be a good one to do for like Halloween, I think. Halloween or Thanksgiving or something like that. Just because, you know, number one, he's an owl, but number two, like the coloring and everything, I feel like it would be cool for that time of year. So We'll see. We'll see how fast he gets listed. And then the last bit of things I just wanted to show you was stuff from Grandma's house. So let's go over that. Hi. Are you cleaning your foot? <laughs> You're a good boy. All right. So yeah, so this is the last bit of things to show. Um, so all these little things, I've been, again, you've probably heard me talk about it in the last video or so, um, I've been kind of going over my grandmother's house and trying to help clean and organize and get rid of things that, um, weren't worth anything or whatever. She had a lot of things, um, but, so I've been going over there and ha hanging out with my nephew and just kind of helping sort through stuff and getting rid of things and trash and stuff like that. But also, you know, taking time to kind of go down memory lane and pick a few pieces that I remember from when I was little um, that meant something to me. <laughs> He's so cute. Um, but so, yeah, so I grabbed a few things last time I was there. She has a really nice um, china cabinet in her dining area that had a bunch of stuff in it. And so my, I called my sister and we were talking about what the plan was going to be. And so she said, you know, hey, go ahead and look through the china cabinet and see if you want to grab anything out of there. And then whatever, you know, whatever you don't want, that's fine. But so um, china cabinet wise, I saw a whole set here of these little like teacups and saucers and then there's like bigger plates and a teapot that all had this pattern on them. The teapot and a couple of the plates didn't have the same marking on the bottom as the rest of the set did. Um, I think it just had the name of the person who hand painted them. 
but the rest of them had this marking on the bottom that has and again I'm sorry for the fuzziness on my camera but it has GB on the inside of the circle there and then on the outer ridge it says um, Czechoslovakia but the thing that really like just was beautiful to me was each piece has this like heavy gold um, paint on the on the handles or like on the edge of the cups and the plates I don't think that's a crack that's just hair because I haven't washed these yet but it's got these beautiful um, I think they're peonies painted on there pink peonies and so yeah so that came with um, I think four no no six cups and six saucers and then some larger plates and the teapot but yeah those were just gorgeous and I love tea and I love tea sets and all that kind of stuff so I, I wanted to have that um, the next thing was these weighted sterling candle holders that I saw in there they're just really nice like especially if you want to have like a fancier dinner or something like that that would be nice to set out like you know or like you know holidays you know Christmas Thanksgiving all that kind of stuff's coming up so that might be nice to set out on the on the dinner table when we're having a meal they need a little bit of a cleaning but I just appreciate that you know um what does it even say prelude yeah, Prelude International Sterling, weighted and reinforced, and then there's a number. It looks like it says N212. So I'm not 100% sure what that means, but I just like them. They have like this beautiful floral design on the bottom there. Those were just nice. Um, another thing was, you know, I just love doilies and things like that she had a ton of doilies in there and I just love setting those up for you know different things like if I want to put them under a piece of glass because you know I love my glass or if I want to put them under like a lamp or something I just jumped at the chance to grab these beautiful doilies oh it looks like she never even used these still got the little plastic tag in there but she's got all kinds of their different sizes and stuff like that um, this one's more intricate. It's like more lacy, I guess, but that's pretty. It's like roses. I really like the border on that too. That's really pretty. So yeah, cause in, I'm trying to like get more honed in on my like design, the way I want like the house to look. And, um, for the bedroom I am kind of going for a little bit of a granny vibe you know that's for lack of a better term but I've got like doilies on the on the dresser over there with my lamps and you know all that kind of stuff let's see and then this one I thought was just really cute it's just like a little Thing and it says uh, Merry Christmas on there that she I don't know if she made this she probably did but yeah it's got like a little leaf on there and some little fringe so I thought maybe like during the holidays I could set that out on the on the table maybe with the candlesticks and put some red or green candles in them or something I don't know I thought that was nice and then this one I don't know I feel like it's almost like a a full tablecloth or something. I don't know. Let's see. Because I haven't even opened these. Let's see what it is. Oh, wow. Okay. So this says Happy Birthday. It's like a fancy birthday tablecloth. Alright. That's pretty cool. Oh, it's got like little um, party hats on it and stuff. That's really sweet. Wow. Okay. So yeah, you could put that... Oh, it's got like a little cupcake in there too. That's cool. So yeah, you could set that out on a table. You know, when it's somebody's birthday. That's really nice. 
Very cool. And then this I just grabbed because um, this screams vintage. So I think this is just like a napkin or piece of material or something like that. But look at that. <laughs> that is so 70s. With the yellow, like, houndstooth pattern, and then you've got these orange and yellow flowers. That is super cool. I don't really know what I'm going to do with that, but that's awesome. Maybe that'll be another thing I can put in the, in the background for some of my pictures or something like that, just to make them look neater. It kind of goes with the next thing I'm going to show you, which is um, this little Tupperware set. I think these were meant for, like, playtime, like little kids, you know, because Tupperware was, like, a big deal back in the day. And, um, so then they probably released a set of, um, mini Tupperware that your kids could play with, with their dolls or something like that, you know? So, I thought those were really cute. It looks like she has three of the cups. She's got a little container there, another little container, a bowl, and then little four little plates and a cup. So that's neat. And yeah, they say Tupperware on the on the bottom or the lid, I think. Hold on. Yeah, on the lids there it says Tupperware. So I thought that was pretty cool. And she loved dolls. Like, she was a big doll person. She loved, um, like, the American Girl dolls. Oh my gosh. See, she had a huge collection of American Girl dolls, which I'm not really into it anymore, but, like, I used to be, um, a porcelain doll girl, and she was the one that really got me into that. So I remember I had, I used to have, like, a whole collection of, like, 20 to 30 dolls up on this shelf that my dad had built me, specifically to put them up there because it was getting crazy but um <laughs> I really enjoyed them so yeah so she had all kinds of stuff like that little things like that that um you know her grandkids could play with or she could even just set them up with her dolls so that was really cute she also had this little thing in her china cabinet which I thought was cute I don't think it serves any purpose other than to be decorative but um it's just a little container with these little mini cooking utensils in it, so I thought that would be cute for the kitchen. And then this, I remember this sitting on her dresser um, as a kid, and it's just, you know, just one of those old um, mirrors. So I thought that would look really nice on my, on my dresser. I just thought that was precious. And then the last thing, which... I'll be good and tell you that it's, it's kind of a cheat. Um, again, this is another piece of uranium glass. This specific piece would be known as Vaseline glass because it already has like that yellow color to it before you even shine a light on it. Um, but so yeah, the reason I say I, it was a little bit of a cheat is because I found this exact bowl in my grandmother's china cabinet. And this is one of the things that I took home. But then the other day when I was looking at it and researching it, I picked it up to measure it, and it slipped right out of my hand and fell and broke into a billion pieces. And I felt so bad just because, A, like nobody likes to break things, but B, you know, how long had she had it, you know what I mean? And then I, I go and break it in one day, you know what I mean? So it was like... That was kind of a sad moment, but, um, but so anyway, I went online and promptly found a replacement for it, so we're just going to pretend like that didn't happen, and that this is actually my grandmother's. But anyway, this is a, um, berry bowl, and this is made from a company, um, EAPG, so, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if that's the name of the company necessarily, but EAPG stands for Early American Pressed Glass. And so the design on here is what's known as daisy and button. So you have, you know, the little buttons there and then the daisy pattern. 
and the inside of this is completely smooth but then the outside you can feel like the cut glass and I just thought that was really cool and it really brights up beautifully um, so yeah I'm gonna set that along alongside my uranium glasses over there on the shelf and I'll probably get one of those larger strands of the the UV light so that way I can look at them light up in the cabinet or something I don't know but yeah that was pretty cool and then the last thing that was in a box of stuff that was given to me were these Le Creuset um, salt and pepper grinders so these are brand new from the looks of it I mean she's still got the tags on there and um, Le Creuset I know is like a desirable brand um, but yeah they've got like this pink ombre coloring to them and you know I love to research things so even the things that I was getting from her house I was like oh you know I wonder what this is or I wonder how much you know what that is and like especially like with these teacups like I had no I still don't even know who the maker of that is but I would like to know um, but so then interestingly enough these salt and pepper shakers like if you see that on the tags they go there they were charging forty dollars a piece for these and apparently on eBay right now these things are going for pretty good money because the this color is considered like a rare color this pink color so some people have them listed for like a hundred and twenty dollars for the set so I'm like geez wow I didn't realize salt and pepper shakers could go for that much but that's kinda crazy so yeah but I'm gonna treasure all this stuff forever and I just love I just love all these little things that remind me of her um so yeah so that's it for the the haul portion and then there's just a few little things I wanted to show um for my solds that have happened since last time which I haven't sold much since the last video because I really honestly haven't been listing much since my last video so I'm kind of slacking in that area right now um but I do want to go ahead and show you what has sold up to this point so let's go do that All right, so this is just the sold portion of the video. This will be the last thing that we go over today. Um, again, like I said, I haven't really been selling a whole lot just because I haven't really been listing, so I've been kind of slacking. And also, it's kind of summertime still, which resellers um, are kind of used to sales slowing down during the summer just because a lot of people are traveling, they're not shopping online as much you know so it just kind of gets into a pattern but um, the first thing that I sold was this little set of um, ceramic decorative little purses and I found those there at the church thrift that I go to in Edgewater there was a set of three and then there was also this little random um, person there that was a, a salt or a pepper shaker which I thought was kind of cute um, I only paid 50 cents for those and I sold those for eight dollars so that wasn't bad not a big sale but still um, the next one was this little set again I think I got those from the same place it's a cow creamer and a little cow shaker and this specific um, design she's known as Elsie the cow so the vintage ones like her face you recognize her face through different um, things that are made but so um, yeah this one had a little bit of damage she's got like a little bit of a chip on her ear and one of them has like uh, a, a chip on the horn there so those sat for a while um, but I still couldn't I had to rescue them let's just say that <laughs> I couldn't just leave them on the shelf to get further and further broken um, but I think I paid yeah when I went for that trip I averaged everything out so those only ended up costing me a dollar and 37 cents and I sold those for 12 so those were really cute the next thing again I guess it was a cow theme um, was another cow creamer um, and I think this was a goodwill purchase if I remember correctly but yeah this is vintage um, hand painted 
and it didn't have any kind of mark. It had a faded mark there, but I wasn't sure what the maker was on that, but it's definitely older, um, and there wasn't any damage or anything like that. And I paid 80 cents for that one, and I sold that for $16. Another thing that isn't really typically something I talk about on the channel is just something that I owned already, like it's not something that I thrifted, but um, it's, a, it's a be on the lookout for if you have anything like this, but this is a brand new sealed um, collection uh, from the Cranberries that's like their music videos, and I had it forever and it was just sitting on the shelf and it was sealed for a really long time. But um, those are going for close to $50 on eBay right now. So if you have one and you want to get rid of it, you know, you might want to put it up there and list it. But uh, this really nice woman from the UK had emailed me and she was trying to get it for a little bit of a lower price. And I went ahead and I sold that to her for $38. So not bad. And then the last one is really exciting because this one I kind of left you on a cliffhanger for the last video. Um, I had told you that this one, I, I had listed this up on eBay for auction, and I was going to wait and see how that turned out, but this was a t-shirt that I bought on a lot of t-shirts from Goodwill, shopgoodwill.com. So it was a lot of six t-shirts, and I averaged out to be paying only $3 per shirt, and this is the specific shirt, this is the reason why I bid on the lot. So I paid $3 for that, and I ended up selling that on eBay for $124. So not bad at all. Yeah, and the reason why is because I know this is a pretty desirable band, and they're not, they're not really together anymore or doing anything anymore, so um, their merchandise is getting uh, more and more popular as time goes on. It's getting a little bit harder to find, so I knew that was going to be something worth looking into. So when I found it online going for that, I was pretty excited. So yeah, so that is the last sold for this video, and um, I will see you guys next time. Bye.